This is a daylight enlarger. This was used for essentially making photographic prints using photographic negatives. I'm going to be cataloguing this object from the Royal Photographic Society collection for the museum's online catalog. This is the original box that the enlarger came to the collection with. We know that it was owned by Fritz Panath. Panath was a photographer born in Austria in 1887. When the object is catalogued, it will come out of this box and into more suitable storage, but we will certainly still keep the box as it is considered part of the original object. So this is the enlarger itself. As you can see, it's held together when closed with a couple of clips. You're then able to open up the object. So we're using these metal struts just to hold this side in place. We then use these further struts to hold this side in place. Then open up the smaller side. That holds this side up in place. Then just loosen this knob here and hopefully this should just slide out. So just before I pull this side over, creating the light tight seal, I just turn it towards you. You can see a small lens here. So that would focus the image of the negative onto the sensitized paper on this side. So yes, that's the light tight seal created through the enlarger. Once everything was ready to go, you would remove the dark slide and you would then tilt the daylight enlarger up towards the sunlight. And depending on the paper that you were using and to a certain extent, the size of the negative and how bright the sunlight was, that would all affect how long you would leave the image to develop. So this side of the enlarger is where you would place your photographic negative. As you can see, there are various cutouts for different sizes of negative, and these can be removed. Therefore, allowing a larger negative to be developed.
here we have the exposure calculator for the enlarger. I'm not entirely sure yet quite how these numbers correspond to one another, but it will certainly relate to the amount of time you would leave the enlarger out in the daylight in order to create your final positive image. So as the sunlight passed through the negative, through the lens, it would then be enlarged through this portion of the uh, enlarger onto your correctly sized paper. So this is the paper holder of the enlarger. You just, you would open it up like so. And inside, as you can see, we have various masks that would have been used in order to crop an image. It's also got this really lovely piece of card that would have been used to hold the paper exactly in place as the exposure was being made. As you can see, the cutouts here would have just allowed the corners of the paper just to slip in and keep it securely in place. Of course, when you're using um, paper that's been sensitized for photographs, this would have all had to have happened in a dark room. So once your paper was securely held inside, this then becomes light tight. And it's at this point you would then pop it into the back of the daylight enlarger, remove the dark slide and let the light come through. As you can see, we've got the name of the owner of the object here. It actually doesn't look handwritten, it looks printed on there. Whether the manufacturer would have been able to do that for Panis or whether he was the, the type of man that had the ability to uh, mark his objects himself, um, we're not sure at this point. There are various adjustable elements to the object. So at the moment, this object doesn't have a electronic record on our catalog. So we need to create one for it. We would go about this by describing the object, what it is, which is a daylight enlarger. And then we would measure some more tangible aspects of the item, such as its dimensions, its height, its depth, its width. We'd like to know who owned it. We know that it was owned by Fritz Panath, who produced it. We can see on the front here that it was produced by Langer and Com. And then we'd also like to go into some of the aspects of its use. 